All right. Welcome, guys. Welcome to Journey with Justin. And today, I have a very, very special guest. Because we all know this is a journey of deconstruction and reconstruction, of a death and rebirth. And we are deconstructing some strongholds, to use a Christian term. We're deconstructing some, some worldviews, some ideas, some really unhealthy ideas, this Protestant ethic. And I have a very, very special, awesome guest, someone who has been influencing me, someone who is an influencer. He's been influencing a lot of people and is going to change the world. Like I know, and, and he's a good friend of mine. I love talking with him. And this has been inspired by our, our conversation with him. So Jamin, welcome to Journey with Justin. Thank you so much for coming on. Dude, it's great to be here. What an introduction. Thank you so much. Yeah, that was so formal. <laughs> yeah, to make it I, I, I was like, I was like, oh, he's like going into preacher mode and then he's going into like <laughs> NPR podcast mode. And I was like, this guy is like, he's a pro in many different flavors. Oh shit, thank you, man. <laughs> I I yeah, I, I think of because I've just said that so many times mm. that it's it's just ingrained now. Yeah. That yeah, makes yeah. Sense. yeah. Yeah, no, it's just it's in your bones. But yeah, man, we'll, we'll jump right into it. Um, maybe you can take like a 30 second introduction. Like, like who, who are you? What do you do? What are you passionate about? Oh man, that's such a, <laughs> such a life, hard life story. Answer. You know, if you, if you want to just like give your life story, number of girlfriends, breakups, uh, ambitions, <laughs> dreams, all that stuff is good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I should have, I should have prepared, but um you know, basically, I'll just say um, I've I've been a, an achiever all my life, and uh, and that that used to be with filmmaking. And I got I got really into filmmaking. I thought like, oh, I want to be a film director someday. And somehow that turned into me running my own uh, film production company, which turned into an animation studio, which after reading the Four Hour Work Week turned into a a remote animation studio. Um, and so then, you know, I kind of transitioned into a part of my life where I was kind of more of like a four hour work week, digital nomad kind of guy, um, which, by the way, is totally overrated. And we can talk about that more later. I love I love talking shit about that lifestyle. And why, why are you like destroying my dreams? <laughs> Don't get me wrong. There's a, there's beautiful, <laughs> amazing things about it. And just like most things in life that people put on a pedestal, completely overrated and has a lot of its own toxic uh problems as well that i had to spend a lot of time i think recovering from um but yeah after my digital nomad phase i mean i'm still a digital nomad now but i, I don't call myself that anymore <laughs> um I'm a, I'm a remote uh worker who doesn't work all that much um but then i kind of moved into a whole spiritual seeking uh phase um and now i guess i'm at a place where uh, I don't like that whole achieving part of my life. It doesn't, it doesn't really resonate for me anymore. That caused actually a lot of pain, a lot of strife, a lot of force, a lot of pressure. Um, and it was very painful. Like it wasn't an enjoyable existence, even though maybe externally it looked like, Oh, like I'm accomplishing a lot of the things I wanted, but right. internally I felt numb, you know, I felt dead. And I think the place I'm in now is a place of rebirth, you know? It's like, it's a it's a place of, um, you know, I met Justin, like we're both uh, being coached by the same mentor. And it's really like what we're learning from him has been like, um, kind of been the opposite of a lot of this like forcing and pushing and, and coming from a place of fear, I would say, and coming from a place of wanting to impress others and worrying about judgment. And now learning like, oh, what does it feel like to be like pulled along by like love, by joy? to 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 be feeling lighter instead of heavier um and spoiler alert it's fucking great <laughs> it's so much better than the other path <laughs> yeah yeah man like when we talked about that you know i'm thinking and and of course i'll, I'll love you to to dig deep in, into your story and, and and philosophy and everything but when you were talking about that it was like i thought of the words ease and delight and like, there's something, something in me lit up. Like, I'm like, I'm, you're talking, I'm like, bro, this is like the greatest thing since sliced bread. Yes. Because, <laughs> like, 
what are we looking for, right? What are we look like? It's it's love. It is this yeah. um this flow, right? Where we're we're aligned. I think that's the mm -hmm. right word, right? Like, can we be aligned? Like every all this other stuff doesn't matter, right? Performance and 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 money and and all the uh, external trappings of success, right? Like they're right. they're good. We're not pooping them. Like I'm not pooping them, right? Money's important. Sure. All that stuff is important, but if it doesn't come from the right place, it's like, why? Why right. go for that if you don't have peace? You know, if you're not aligned. So totally. anyways, and we get, we get confused, right? We, we like, we forget that the entire fucking reason we chased after money or whatever, that fancy looking, you know, digital nomad working on the beach lifestyle or whatever it was, we didn't chase them just to, to get those things. We wanted the money, we wanted the cool job, we wanted the girlfriend, whatever, so that we could feel peace, love, Dude. like self-acceptance, like all these things mm. that we are now realizing on the path that we're on and, and, and the mentor we're working with, like, oh, you can just you can just go straight to those things. Like you can just you can just jump straight to that. You can just instead of trying to find X, Y, or Z to cultivate love and peace. And acceptance like you can just go straight to the love peace and acceptance like what a concept yeah. <laughs> yes <clears throat> i'm so glad you said that and 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 i'm getting excited by you saying that and i'm like i'm being reminded i'm being reminded like, you're right all the things that we're chasing whether it's it's a relationship whether it's more money a better job a cool car whatever it is it's because that thing gives us a feeling yeah. That's so insane. And um, I had a mentor who's also Asian. Mm. Uh, he was, I, I had him on the podcast. Oh. It, it's, it's, it's crazy. And, and he was talking about like, dude, success is a feeling. Fulfillment is a feeling. Right. And I remember him saying that back when he was like mentoring me, coaching me, but I wasn't ready to receive it at that time. Mm. And I didn't get it. But now I'm like, oh, yes, that makes sense. Yeah, it is. It is a feeling. And in fact, if it's a feeling, then we can generate that feeling. We can right. give it to ourselves. It right. takes a little bit of work, right? But, but it's possible, right? So, anyways, I just got I got excited when you said that. Like, that's such a great reminder. Like, I forgot that. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. And making those feelings yeah. the priority instead of what we've all done, and I'm as guilty of it as anyone. But confusing it, right? Confusing like the means of accessing those feelings for the yeah. end goal. And it's like, no, this is why you're not feeling love, peace, and acceptance because you you got confused it's not in those things and uh yeah so it's good to be reminded of that yeah well so <clears throat> maybe you can share a little bit about your story and i know like both of us are asian right in asian culture there's a expectation for performance <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say yeah. that, right? Totally. Uh, it's it, it inbuilt in this in this culture. So you weren't always like in this space of being pulled by love and, and curiosity, right? Mm -hmm. uh, maybe you could share a little bit about your your background and, and what what happened there. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I think I think most Asians can relate that um, you know we come from a strong culture of like discipline and achieve success like striving for success um you know being doctors and uh and what have you uh lawyers and stuff engineers engineers exactly <laughs> whatever will make you the most money you know really um but um yeah i think that work ethic has always been like really strongly ingrained in me i mean it, it's been a gift and a curse you know um it's been it's been a gift in that you know, my mom really instilled it in me. She was super like hard on me and always, you know, making me do a million things and take extra classes and, you know, push myself so I could, you know, get that good resume for college, all that stuff. Um, and she really did instill in me like, like a very strong worth at work ethic and a, and a strong discipline. And with that, I feel like I was able to accomplish most of the things that I like set out to do, but at the cost of my soul. <laughs> Ooh. and like it's just funny because like looking back and i think about like especially like making films and uh getting my business off the ground and just all these different things 
um, it was like doing the work was never the problem for me. But I almost feel like, you know, my body with its infinite wisdom, as all of our bodies have, like, was so smart in that, like, even as I was achieving these external goals and I was pushing myself harder and harder, internally, I would feel worse and worse and more numb and more disconnected and more stressed. Um, and, you know, I didn't understand at the time that that was like my body, like sending me a signal, like, dude, this is not the way, like, stop. And I was like, I was like, oh, this feels bad. Let me push harder. Like, let me yeah. go, yeah. let me go yeah. even more to the extreme. Right. And, and it was like a, it was a lesson I had to learn where it was like, I pushed hard enough until the point where I realized something was broken with my entire way of like looking at life. Like this idea of like, just go for your goals, achieve, 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 you know, make all your checklists and then you'll be happy. And I realized, no, like the, the more I'm getting actually the worse and worse I'm feeling and something, something is wrong here. And, uh, and it was right that that gut feeling was was completely right. And it just took me a while to, to really listen to it. How long do you think it took? <laughs> I mean, in some ways, <laughs> like my entire life. <laughs> fair enough, fair enough. But but I mean, let me see. Let me try to answer that question seriously. Like, yeah, you know, I feel like I feel like the, that whole achieving mindset really kicked in. I want to say around like middle school. Like before then, life was like this curious playground. And it was like, oh, I love like movies. And my dad had like a little a Super 8 camera and I would pick it up and I would make things. And it was just fun. I did it because it was enjoyable. I did it because it, it was uh, exciting to me. You know, no other reason. Right. And then I think around middle school, I think some people started to tell me like, wow, you're really good at that. And I think I made like a video for class. And people were like, whoa, your video is really good. And like, I like that feeling. Like my ego got a hit, you know? And that's when I started to realize, oh, oh, I could like, I could achieve with this, you know? Like I could, I could kind of make something of myself. And I think that's when pure enjoyment and like exploration and fun kind of got hijacked by oh, let's try to achieve all of our ridiculous and out of touch notions of happiness through this thing you love. Let's take this thing you love and like, let's try to fulfill all your insecurities and your holes and the, you know, the thing, your traumas. We're going to fix all of that by just like being really, really good at this one thing. And, and if enough people love you for it, everything's gonna be perfect, right? Yeah. And that's like when shit started to go off the rails. And the more I chased it, you know, the more empty I would feel. And I didn't realize that the emptiness was actually my compass. It was actually a sign. The emptiness was like, yo, no, 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 no. The further we go in this direction, it's this is gonna cause more pain. Like, let's let's back it up. And um, I think it wasn't really until probably it was a slow process over the last 10 years, uh, that like my into like my mid 20s and into my 30s, that like I think it really started, I really started to listen to that. And I started, I started to prioritize listening to my gut and that feeling of like, is this good for me or not? Does this feel right or not? I started to prioritize that over like what other people thought, over my ideas of what success were, over the ideas that my parents had of what success was like. Yeah. And it was a slow process, right? Like I'd say like over 10 years of like slowly, like getting to know what even that feeling is. Cause I didn't even know what it was for a long time. And then listening to it more and more and more and more to the point where like, I would say it's mostly guiding my life. Like that's the main thing I'm, I feel like I'm listening to as, as I do anything in life now. Is that gut feeling, the intuition? The yeah. Moment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Super key. Super key. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I... I don't know if I can relate a hundred percent. Right. So like, I know I've, I told you this before. Um, I did grow up in an Asian family, obviously, <laughs> adopted, but um, uh, I was the second child. So mm. my parents went really easy on me. They were hard on my brother. <laughs> then they got exhausted. <laughs> my brother's like freaking smart, right? Yeah, I, think they got, I don't know if they got exhausted. I think he'll be the me. doctor. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> you know what? Actually, he, um, he didn't even go that route. 
<laughs> to be yeah fun good for him enough but uh now he is like in computer science anyway but that was not a original <laughs> spiel um but yeah they went easy on me and so i was like super lazy yeah and and uh, played a bunch of video games watch tv and uh that actually caused some some different problems and i, I really hated myself for it because i like felt like i was oh, man i'm just lazy i can't Motiva motivate myself to do much of anything mm. and so I, I you know I, I beat myself up a lot and i still do right there's still this pattern of, of neuroticism but but uh, getting good coaching and and getting my uh my brain re rewired right my mind rewired by people like you man that like espouse this philosophy and embody this mm. and, and you know yeah like there's like this energetic shift that happens when you're, you're talking with people who are living uh, like on a different frequency, so to speak, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know where I was going with this whole thing. Yeah, yeah. No, none of us do. We're just <laughs> we're just riding the wave of life. We're exactly. just riding the wave. Um, exactly. Yeah. You know, like what you were saying just reminded me. I, I was talking about this with my friend Erica, who just started um, coaching with with our same mentor. So we're we're building like we're building a tribe here. It's it's pretty dope. Um, but I, I was talking about this with her and she said something interesting where she was just like, she was like, yeah, you know, it's like all this time, I feel like what I've, what I've need to learn was like, was to trust in myself. It's like all that information, all that guidance, like it's always been there. It's like my, my body in a way is like screaming for me to like, like, don't do that. <laughs> like, no, 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 this is the direction you want to go in. And, and like, I didn't know how to trust that. Um. And I, I would agree with that 100%. Um, I don't think like this is some big like mystical thing or like tapping into, you know, a higher power. I mean, I think you could call it that. You could yeah. call it that. Um, but on a very simple level, I, I do think it really is like, like listening to your gut, like almost literally, like actually like feeling into your body and I, I don't, you know, at least it's that way for me. Like when I am doing things that I can, that, that don't feel right for me, I actually do kind of, I feel it in my gut. I feel like that heaviness, like that, uh, this like rock kind of start to form this like contraction. And I think I spent my entire life ignoring it or trying to shove past it or questioning it, you know, like someone, someone would be like, oh, do you want to take on this project? And my gut would be like, no, 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 no. And my mind would be like, oh man, like that's a lot of money. That's some prestige. Like that's a, that's yeah. a big brand. Like we got to do it. People are going to think you're cool. We got to do it. Makes a lot of sense. Exactly. And, and you know, I really think a lot of this path, it's not so much being like super fucking smart or, um, or whatever. I, I think in a lot of ways, a lot of us just have to fuck up enough. <laughs> yep. And, and be aware of the feeling. You kind of need both. You need to fuck up enough. At the same time, you have to like be more and more aware of like how your body is feeling throughout all these things. Um, and then see the relationship and see like, oh, when I, when I, that, that heavy feeling, when I ignore it and I barrel past it and what happens, does it get heavier? Yeah, it usually does. <laughs> it usually gets worse. Like, what happens when I when I do decisions that like lighten that, you know, like maybe taking time off, maybe like not doing the thing that everyone else wants me to do, even though it's really cool or whatever. Um, and it's like it's just a lot of trial and error until you start to realize like through there you you begin to trust that feeling because you've had enough reference experiences where you're like, ah, OK, this is what happens when I ignore it. This is what it feels like when I don't. I want to keep going in that direction. And it's just like, it's just something, a muscle you build. <clears throat> Excuse me. Yeah. I'm thinking that that's a good, that's a good way to put it, right? The muscle you build. Mm. There has to be some, some sort of practice, right? Um, yeah. How do we, let's say, uh, well, this is a very heady question, right? <laughs> Man, I actually had something, but I totally, I totally forgot. I think I'm in my head. It's all good. It's all good. We uh, roll with it. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. What's your experience like with when I say like kind of feeling into your gut or like listening to your gut? 
like what is what's your experience with that like do you yeah how do you feel about that you know it's it's only been recently where i've started to really feel my body and and mm. do it, so to speak and you know we, we've been doing coaching with thomas and i think it's it's kind of taken it to a different level right listening to your love or feeling yeah. your love and 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 talking to it yeah i know it sounds like so insane weird <laughs> weird maybe mystical it's but um yeah, like that's that's a part of who we are. That's our part of our psyche that we can interact with. Um, or if you believe in God, that's that's God, right? Mm. God has. Um, I haven't had too much experience listening to my gut, so to speak. It's been mm. the exact opposite. I've been in my head my my entire life. I relate. I relate to that also, yeah. for sure. Yeah, and, and I would even say, like, you reminded me. I feel like this coming from the heart is like a newer thing for me as well. I mean, really it's, I feel like really been in the last few months um, working with, with our shared mentor. Um, and it makes me reflect that I, you know, the last 10 years, I feel like where I've been on this process of, I think like listening to my gut more and more while I was listening to my body and like tuning into my body and intuition in, in a way, I feel like it was an intuition that was kind of guided still from a place of fear it was still mostly like, oh, don't do that. That's bad. Like, but it was coming more from that. And like, I couldn't feel much more than that. I couldn't feel much more than this, like very deep primal, like, uh, that's no, that's not good. You know? Um, and now that I'm kind of on a path where it's not so much just avoiding the shit that feels bad and using that as my compass, but it's also a compass of like, yo, what is the shit that like, enlivens you what is the shit that that makes you like come alive and opens your heart and makes you feel connected and inspired and joyous like that's newer for me and it's still i think the same your body's compass your 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 body's natural intuition but it feels <laughs> it feels way better to be pulled along by the things that excite you and kind of bring you to life than being like pushed away from the things that hurt you and like diminish you and can make you contract, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's like the pain pleasure principle, right? Mm, and yeah. and kind of just piggybacking off of what you said about like pain is an indicator that actually was was your compass, right? The yeah. or the the bad feeling, right? It's actually right. In a weird way, it's it's good. It's your guide. Yes, it's your compass. One hundred percent. It's yeah. It's never been your enemy. It's right. always been your guide. It's always been your guide. Yeah. Yeah. And, and making that shift will change everything for one. And then making the shift from there is saying, okay, yes, there is. We have a great guide called pain, and fear, and mm. sadness, or what what have you. Mm -hmm. But then there's also like an even better guide. Yeah. That we have love, yeah. Yeah. enjoyment, right. alignment, whatever, whatever you want to call it, right? Like the, the thing that excites us, right? Um, that is meaningful, purpose. And yeah, I'm so glad you said that. Like there's these two, there's two guides. They're both beautiful. Mm -hmm. They're both beautiful. How, like in your experience, um, and I know we, we've talked about this in a previous conversation, like at some point, like you really just, you just burned out. And you, you've been mm. in the personal development space for a while. Like you know what the fuck you're talking about. Like you, <laughs> you really achieved a lot of good good things. And and so like, how do we actually transition transition from like man, whew, pain? That's that's been a guide, and I've been ignoring pain. But now, you know, how, could, can I start to listen to to love and enjoyment and all those things? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question, and I think the answer. Not, not to, not to pull a cop out, but I think it's going to be different for every single person, right? That's fair. Um, and uh, all I know is my experience. I, I will say, I think the the real answer, I think, for that question is like, is like just really, really start to pay attention to the, your inner compass, right? Like, really, really start to pay attention to like how things make you feel, um, both from like the fear kind of contraction side but also like the pleasure the excitement like what what makes you feel like your best self um and really pay attention to those in in all your situations and and just and 
and really like start to listen to that more and more and more. And it'll take you down your unique one in a billion path that's going to look different from everyone else's. Um, but really following that, I think, is the only way to actually live like your authentic and your best life. Um, but yeah, for, for me, what that looked like um, was, you know, like I, I did, you know, I, I said I was, a, I was a hardcore achiever and that just wasn't working for me. <laughs> and it and it ran me to the ground and it it made me feel really numb and and dead and 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 that's all I knew how to do all I knew how to do was just push 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 force 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 um just try to to force everything to happen in my life and um eventually you know the pain from that pushed me down a spiritual path and uh, I dove down and explored the world of, um, of non-duality, uh, which, um, it, it's very hard to talk about, but, but, you know, it's, it's, it's teachers like Eckhart Tolle, like the power of now or Adyashanti or what a lot of traditions like Zen Buddhism or Dzogchen are like pointing to. Um, and there's a lot of ways to describe it. I think right now, the way I, I feel like maybe talking about it in a simple way is like this idea. One of the things I really learned from it was realizing that like my entire way of looking at the world was, um, was through stories and thought. Like I, I had all these ideas about who I was and, and these identities that I had in myself, filmmaker, uh, I have to be cool. I, you know, I have to like be well liked, whatever. And they're, they're all just sentences, you know, all those labels I had on myself, all of my dreams, everything. If you really boil them down, they're just words. They're just letters, A through Z, strung together, and then they're running in my head, and I was a slave to them. Like, I, those things ran my entire life, and I did everything for those words um, and completely ignored whether it made me feel shitty or whatever. I was just a slave to those words and uh, and going down this non-dual and this more meditative uh, path, like really allowed me to see that like the mind for what it was and the mind can be a beautiful thing, but also what it does is it, is it kind of can separate and box everything in and, and we can really be living in just a haze of sentences. Like, like this present moment right now, if you if you not if you're not focusing on the sentences in your head is fucking incredible it's indescribable there's just this one mush of experience happening right sounds colors um yeah just all sorts of sensations coming up and there's no division between any of it any of it it's just this one experience which is what mm. non-dual means right not two like one right. but our mind comes in and it separates everything. It chops everything up. Laptop, Justin, me, microphone, you know, I'm on a podcast. Like, And those are useful tools, labeling things and living our life with these markers. But when you are lost and you believe that's your reality and you're in, in that story, 99% of the time you're reading those words 99% of the time and you don't realize you're like, you know, you're beyond those sentences, that there's this indescribable, beautiful experience beyond all that. Um, it can really drive you crazy. Um, and so exploring all that was, uh, was very liberating for me in a lot of ways. Um, I still had that really like forcing mindset, right? Like, of course I took my forcing mindset and I applied it to this. It was like, oh shit, I'm going to fucking meditate like hours a day. I'm going to be fucking enlightened by 30. Like, I'm just going to like take this like to the max, um, but it did it did uh, teach me uh, some profound things, and I think really got me to disidentify with these labels and these ideas that I had about living my life, and um, and just from thinking, like, it allowed me to like take a step back from it in a very powerful way uh, that I think has allowed me to really like kind of uh, kind of relax in a way. It provided some sanity. It provided some peace from from being enslaved to my mind and and being caught up in its machinations and 
ideas like 24 seven all the time. So yeah, that was, that was kind of a big, interesting chapter in my life. That was, that played a pretty pivotal part in me, um, kind of learning and getting to a place to kind of stop this like forcing way of life. Yeah. That's, Actually, Sorry, I know I just dropped. Direction. I just dropped a lot of random shit yeah, on no, you. No, I'm not even sure if I answered hey. your question. <laughs> well, so, like, at what point did you start to actually become pulled by by love? Yeah. Or, um, I guess, uh, to to use the phrase you use, like, to act, you actually started to ride the wave of life. Yeah, yeah, which is beautiful. <laughs> so, I feel like so. Yeah, I, I explain all that non-dual stuff as like a little preamble kind of, but uh, I would say that experience peaked um, a little over a year ago, about a year and a half ago. I did, I went to a retreat in India with uh, my non-dual teacher uh, who's awesome. I seem to be drawn to teachers who are very like iconoclastic, like cut against the, against the grain, you know? Um, I think similar with our mentor right now, he's just like, He's teaches <laughs> self love, but he's not like what you would expect from like a self love guy, you know, I agree. Um, in the best possible way. And the, this non dual teacher was um, very much he was like a, a old school like rock and roller. He had a drug addiction, and that's what led him onto this path of spirituality. Um, but yeah, like I was on this long retreat with him, and while I was there, it just hit me so strongly. Like holy shit, I've been on this like crazy fucking hamster wheel of achievement, 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 pushing, 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 striving. And for what? Right? Like, and at the time, I, you know, this is just a year and a half ago, I thought like, okay, I feel like I have a pretty healthy balanced view of life now. I'm not chasing all those dreams of career and stuff anymore. I'm inter interested in like more self-development and therapy and becoming just a healthier, more less trauma filled individual. Um, but even that I found a way to just like step on the gas and right. put a lot of pressure on myself. You know, I constantly felt like I wasn't doing enough. I constantly felt like I need to get to a certain place. Um, I had a blog and a podcast and I was making videos and I was like, I need to be doing more content. I gotta be pushing more stuff out. We gotta go, 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 go. And not to mention at the same time, I was like struggling with chronic health issues. I had hypothyroidism. So my energy was like already like shot. And when I was on India, where I was there for like three weeks, and we're just sitting, we're just at peace. I'm learning from this guy who's basically just telling me like, dude, you do not need to listen to the crazy thoughts in your head. Like you are not the crazy thoughts in your head. You can relax, like you can just let go. And it just like, it sank in for me. Like, I was like, holy shit. Like I've been on this crazy hamster wheel and why, where am I trying to get to? Where, why, where am I running to so fast? If I build like a crazy big podcast audience, if I get like thousands of people subscribing to my blog, like what does that actually get me? What is missing actually right now? Like, and it just, I don't know, just being in the peace and feeling the fulfillment of just being. I was like, man, this shit is ridiculous. Like, it just felt like so silly, you know? And I just, I stopped achieving. It literally just like happened like that. Huh. And I came back, I remember I came back to San Francisco and I had this like, I think I was working on a big video. Like I even, I was gonna do a whole video on my time in India. I even like was video, like taking video the entire time. I recorded a bunch of stuff. I had a bunch of like deep insightful thoughts. I even knew how I was gonna edit it in my head. And I came back to SF and I was like, do I actually want to work on this? No, no. And I felt no guilt for the first time in my life. Any other time, if I was like, do I want to work on this? No, oh. I'd be like, well, you suck. You're a piece of shit. You better be doing this. Or you're going to be yeah, a piece right. of shit for the rest of your life. Right. And this time the mind was quiet. I was like, no, the mind was quiet. And I was like, what do I feel like doing? I think I want to watch some Netflix right now or maybe read a book. Yeah, that sounds nice. And I just let go of achieving um and i let go of it for pretty much a year i like from that point on like when i came back from india i just felt this like it felt very clear to me it was like oh like i want to do things because they feel enjoyable to do 
And if they don't, then I don't want to do it. It just felt like a very simple, you know, it felt like kind of like coming back to who I was as a kid when I was like, oh, I want to make movies because it's fun. Like ego wasn't involved yeah. in it. It was just like, it's fun to do. If it's not fun, I don't do it. Like it's not, it's just kid. It's a kid's way of playing yeah. with the world, you know? And I, I feel like I came back to that place and I was like, and it just felt silly from that perspective to do things that were going to cause me all sorts of pain and stress so that, oh, you can get to like a, a greater number of likes, like, you know, from let's say that simpler kid way of looking at the world. It's like, who gives a fuck? I just want to play. I want to like enjoy yeah. how I feel. Yeah. You know? Um, and it was very interesting to take, to kind of take a year off from uh, life in a way from like, I spent a lot of time that year just resting spending time with friends, a lot of reading. I did watch a lot of movies, which, you know, I love. Um, I just like, it was just very, it was a very restful time. And I didn't realize it then, but looking back, I think it was also huge for my health. It's like, mm. I had chronic health issues. I'm pushing my tank like to empty. And then I finally got to listen to my body for a year, which was like, yo, I just want to chill. And in my head, I was like, am I being a little lazy? Yeah, who cares? But actually, I think it was the opposite of that. I think it was being growthful. I think it was being healing, right. like rest, you know, as our as our mentor says, rest equals growth. <laughs> like, and it's true. And I think I needed a lot of it from a, year, a lifetime of pushing myself too hard. Um, and yeah, so that was that was a very, very interesting and uh, very enjoyable uh, time. <laughs> Dude, it's it's such a weird paradox, right? It's when we're not trying, we're not pushing, trying to grow. We're really just being and letting go. It's true surrender. Then that's like where the real growth happens, right? Yeah. Like you can't you can't like even trying to desire to be enlightened, right? You, we can be attached to be, to being enlightened and they'll actually push away enlightenment. Right? right? This weird paradox. Right. Totally. Totally. It was it was the striving and the forcing and the pushing that I think was causing all of my problems, really, and that I was trying to push and force and strive away from. You know, it was like this little crazy paradox and catch catch 22. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was very interesting, you know, like taking a year off from achieving when I had really spent my entire adulthood knowing only that one thing. And never having been able to ever take any time off or not or rest without feeling guilty, without feeling I was like falling behind in some imaginary race, right? Yeah. Um, losing some imaginary competition, um, and so it was. It was quite weird. Um, and there was a part of me that was actually like, "Oh, am I gonna? Am I gonna be like this for the rest of my life?" And and you know what? I was actually okay with it i was you know i was so in that mode of like i'm just gonna trust like whatever it is that i want to do and feel pulled to do i'm i'm only gonna do that and if i only feel pulled to sitting on this couch and reading and just chilling okay i get maybe that's gonna be my life like there was a part of me that was a little like scared but i was like oh well i trust that more more than anything else more than the ideas in my head hmm. now that have been trying to guide me and doing a pretty poor piss poor job of that my whole life um, and there was a part of me, you know, like I've always been, I think similar to you, like I've loved self growth and personal development and kind of like just constantly like improving myself and, and learning new skills. And I didn't feel any pull towards that in that year of time off. Right. And I was like, Oh, maybe that part of me is gone forever. Like, wow. And you know, I was a little sad about that, but I was like, okay, maybe that's just that part's done. Maybe that part only came from fear and like striving and trying to be something. If that's true, good riddance, okay. But the cool thing was <laughs> I noticed a few months ago, I was living in Mexico for the winter and um, and my health right in my last month around February, my health like with my chronic health issues like really started to improve and skyrocket. And suddenly I started having like energy again. And then suddenly I like got kind of curious, you know, I was like, oh, I've always wanted to explore like Qigong, like this kind of moving meditation thing. Like that might be kind of fun. And uh, let me play around with some journaling again and want to explore like cold showers and intermittent fasting. And then all of a sudden, like just my curiosity kind of like 
starts to turn up. And before I knew it, like I was like in full on Jamin, like pedal to the metal doing like 20 different experiments. I had like a three hour morning routine. I mean, I still do. Um, like I was just doing Excellent. so much crazy, exploring so much that I was like waking up early, doing, you know, cold shower, doing all my stuff, taking a break for lunch and going all the way, you know, really to the afternoon only taking a break to play volleyball with my friends on the beach and then like coming back to like do other stuff. And it was so funny. I was like, yo, this externally, this looks exactly like what I was doing before, like pushing my pedal to the metal, like pushing myself too hard. But internally it felt completely different. And that was like such a cool thing for me to, to witness where basically it became very clear for me then I was like before I was doing all this stuff. I mean, there was a little bit, I was always interested in stuff. There's an authentic enjoyment, but like 90% of me pushing myself was coming from like, yeah, trying to fix myself, coming from inadequacy, from fear, trying to get somewhere. Cause I didn't feel good enough. And now like with, with all that, those kind of ideas kind of squashed or, you know, from, from my brain, I was just, I was watching and I was like, oh shit, I'm actually doing this just purely for the enjoyment now. I'm doing this because like it's exciting to me and it feels good to do. And all these things I'm learning just like light me up even more. And I was like, whoa, this is a completely different experience. And it was so much more enjoyable. And it didn't have that pressure to it, even though it looked like it did. It was all running on the fuel of like excitement and, and it was pulling me. And I knew in that moment, and I still know now, like if my desire for this stuff stopped, like right now, if I like ended this podcast and I was like, I actually don't feel like I'm not interested in coaching, I'm not interested in like diving into my emotions or reading these books or whatever, like I would trust that. That's how deep my trust has gotten that I'm like, that is the only thing I'm going to trust. And I was like, if this, all this self-growth stuff and everything I'm diving into, if this stops tomorrow... I'm at peace with that. I'm okay with that. Um, and it's such a different experience of life. Like it's just no pressure. I'm doing everything cause it's enjoyable. Things are now like, feel like they really have a momentum of their own. It, in some ways it feels like I've removed myself from the equation. Like before there was like a little Jamin, like just running a million miles, the feeling it's like, it's got to run this whole machine of life. And then it's in some ways I feel like I've almost removed myself. And, and it's just playing out how it needs to. If life is like, yo, like, I want you to slow down or I want you to stop this. Or, I want you to like explore something else. Like it's going to take me there. If life wants me to dive into this shit, pedal to metal, I'm going. If it wants me to slow down, cool. Like it's almost like what, I, like my yeah. ideas and what I think don't even matter anymore. Like oh, in some ways it's like, I'm on a beautiful, like autopilot, I guess. Um, which I think is maybe where a little bit of that surfing analogy that you like kind of comes into play. Yeah. But um give me one second, man. So sorry. Yeah. No, please. I'll just keep talking because I'm very good at doing so. <laughs> but um yeah, I, I was I was telling Justin about this the other day and <clears throat> we were just having this conversation. And I realized like the way things are kind of flowing now like I was saying, it, it feels a little bit like it's on autopilot, right? It's like I've almost removed myself from the equation and, and Jamin doesn't have to be like forcing and struggling and pushing and making everything happen. It's almost like if I'm just completely in flow with like listening to what my body is telling me and like, oh, if this is enjoyable, I go for it. If it's not, I don't. And if I'm just letting that happen, everything is just kind of flowing on its own. There's no second guessing and not much questioning, right? Um, and when we were, me and Justin were talking about it, I was like, yeah, but you know, like autopilot sounds, sounds wrong. Like it sounds lazy almost. It sounds like lying back on a floaty and just letting the river of life just like take you and you're just doing jack shit. Right. And I was like, I don't, I don't think that's quite the right analogy. Like the way it feels is almost a little bit more like surfing, which is you're still like you're still going with the flow of life. You're, you're actually locked in completely with the flow of life. You, the two of you are, are completely locked in, but it's not like some lazy thing where you just check out, you zone out and then you, you're riding with the flow of life. 
if a surfer did that, you'd be you'd wipe out in a second. Like surfing is actually is actually a skillful experience. It's it's actually you have to be completely present every moment, every second. You cannot if you're surfing, you cannot like think about oh, what am I going to eat for dinner tomorrow or or whatever. Like you have to be in the moment. You have to be feeling everything that the waves that life is giving you, and you got to be responding to it in every moment and writing it and and tuned into it, attuned to it. Yeah. Um, and that's where I think that's where I think like it's actually a, just a much more appropriate analogy, bro. I love that. I missed a little bit of that. I had to, but but yeah, like the surfing analogy is awesome. It's amazing. It's this is really a message about being present, about surrender. You know, trust, trusting yourself, trust, trusting that your body knows actually what it needs, like. And that instead of like fighting against like your wants and, and your enjoyment and contraction, like, like we were saying earlier, all of it, the pain, the, the enjoyment, they're all guides that are actually working to kind of pull you in certain directions. And it's not super easy, especially if we spend a lifetime ignoring them. Right. That's why it's like a skill. Yeah. Like if, you know, if it was that easy, we just we just eat every donut we see or every time like we are in a relationship and an uncomfortable conversation comes up. We're like, oh, that's my intuition telling me I shouldn't do this. Right. It's uncomfortable. Like I'm going to run away. Like it's like, no, no, no. There's actually a much deeper guidance beyond the surface level things. And it takes time, I think, to feel it, to listen to it, to know what it is, to, to go through enough situations um, where you start to to understand like that like what your body, what life is telling you on a deeper level. Mm. Um, but it's, I think the more and more time, attention, energy you put into that, the more you let that guide you rather than ideas, ideas that your parents put in you, culture put in you, your friends put in you, what you saw on TV put in you. Like when you really let your own self really like start to, to just, guide you again, you trust it. It's like life opens up and becomes unbelievable in in just ever more amazing ways. And it starts to feel more and more like, yeah, you're just surfing, you're just in this flow. And it's, and you're gonna start even sound like a hippie. Like I'd never <laughs> would have used words like this before, but literally in the last few weeks, I've been using words like, man, this shit feels like magical, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> And I it literally feels like that, like, like serendipitous, like coincidences and things like right when I need them, like just keep coming up right at the moment I need them. And like, I'm still like a very logical, rational minded guy. Like I, I actually think that I can explain this stuff like logically, like I bet I have like some theories, but we're not even going to go into that. It doesn't even fucking matter. Like, um, I just think like, when you're kind of tuned in to the body of life, like we're just all cells, right? Like in this giant body of the universe or whatever you want to call it. Um, and I think like the more we're tuned into these crazy ideas and letting that guide us, it's like cells in the body, like kind of running rogue and fucking up. Like they're not going with the flow of, of, of the whole ecosystem mm -hmm. and, and they're sick, right? They're causing disease. They're like, they're fucking up. They're hurting other cells. They're hurting the body. But the more we actually tune in with with the way nature programmed us, like the way life programmed us, like fucking life knew what it was doing. You know, like it didn't it didn't go offline when humans came in. It created us. We are it. Yeah. And it still is. And it's like when we're able to get back, back in touch with like how the how we as these cells are supposed to work in this body. Like, I think we actually become tuned back in with like the ecosystem as a whole. We get tuned things start to flow and things start to line up in the same way that like a sick cell, once it starts like kind of behaving properly and following the right guidance is now in harmony with everything else. And it's a beautiful harmony. So I don't think it's just ra random magic happening. I think it's actually, this is what life is normal life, normal harmony, a normal healthy body of life is supposed to feel like. And it's pretty great. It's so much better than being that sick rogue cell doing yeah. crazy shit. <laughs> yeah, dude, there's so much stuff you said that I feel like 
I'm trying to remember everything. I'm like, oh, I'm on this, this, and this, and this. But, I told you I can talk. <laughs> no, that's great, man. Um, the, what came up for me was the word dis disease, hmm. which if you break it down is dis ease. Yes. Or not at ease. Right. So if we're not at ease, there's something, there's something wrong, right? We're not living in the original design, like what you were saying of like life. Right. Yeah. Like there, there, there should be a harmony. There needs to be a harmony. Totally. And if there's not, yeah, there's something wrong. So, um, dang it. I, I like, there's like so many different points I want. <laughs> I like the point you made about ease. Like now that I'm feeling ease more and more and more in my life, like I, I, yeah, it feels to me like, oh, like it's crazy to me that I spent most of my life, you know, on, on like three over three decades. I feel like not like that was not my default. Mm -hmm. And to me now, ease feels like, oh, yeah, this is how life like as a default, like should be like like a state of balance, kind of a state of harmony. And it doesn't mean you're going to feel good all the time, but it's that's kind of like your your center point and and you'll you'll kind of move but that's kind of like your baseline and it's um yeah it fe not only does it feel great i think it's great for the body it seems to be good for the, all the other people for me in life it's it's just i think a representation of a state of harmony both inside outside and probably further out as well you know yeah yeah man it's good shit <laughs> Uh, another point, because you just you just cover so much, man. But I remember you saying, like, it's like you were returning to being a child. Yeah, and and just enjoying the moment and and playing, right? Um, it made me think of a couple of things. I don't know if you ever watched, um, uh, Yes Man. Mm -mm. No, with Jim Carrey. Damn. Oh yeah, I have seen that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I forgot the actor's name, like Zoe somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the 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 girl was like, yeah, like life's a playground. Like I think some at some point we just forget it. Mm. And that's so true. And like like her character is is kind of embodies that because she just does what she enjoys, what she loves, even though it's mm. like so weird. And it also made me think of, you know, there's a Bible verse in in the New Testament you know, in the Gospels. Jesus says, unless you become like one of these little ones. Unless you become like a child, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Mm. And I think this is what he was talking about, like this childlike awe and wonder of life, of ourselves, of the moment. Yeah. You know? and, and once we can do that, we enter, quote unquote, the kingdom of heaven. Right? Yeah. This, this life that we were designed to live. So that's, that's beautiful. What yeah. And, and that reminds me, like I do... I do want to make like a little bit of a distinction. I, I understand that someone listening to this could easily be like, oh, is he just saying like, you know, just just live a hedonistic lifestyle, like just follow like whatever whims of pleasure kind of come across your way, whether it's spending a shit ton of money gambling or whatever. And it's like, and it's like, no, actually, like, and I, maybe this is the distinction between like the childlike perspective, right? in one way it is like returning to that way of viewing wor the world as a playground. But I think with, with the wisdom and maybe the, the understanding of an adult, it's like taking that perspective, but with like a much greater depth where you realize like going for your enjoyment doesn't always feel like getting that toy. It doesn't always feel like fun, right? Like, yeah. you know, that there's a greater enjoyment. There might be a conversation you have to have in a relationship. That's going to be really difficult, but you, and especially having developed your inner compass, like you can feel actually like this scary thing, you, as scary as it is. And as much as like, I don't want to do this and I know it's going to be kind of painful. You also recognize that it there's like a, it's like a good kind of pain. And there's actually like mm -hmm. so much depth, like there's actually a greater quote unquote enjoyment to that deeper than just a surface level enjoyment. Um, yeah. And yeah. And I think that's, that's a really important distinction is like, yes, life becomes, a deeper following and pulling pulled by enjoyment. And, and it is like, yeah, it is like with that childlike wonder in that playground, but with like, but with greater depth, you know, the enjoyment that you would chase as a child, like now could look like having like the really scary conversation with your parents, right? Like it could be stepping into fear and, and, and 
maybe trying to talk to a stranger, even though everything in you is like, oh, this is scary. But there's like, it's a deeper enjoyment. It's like a deeper yeah. level of like something that's guiding you. And um, and yeah, it's hard to talk about, but it, the more you explore it and and I think everyone listening like knows that intuitively, you know, like if you're studying for a test in college, like in the moment, you might have felt better. Ah, I'm just going to watch Netflix like a superficial pleasure would have that would have you know been satisfying that. But, you know, holistically, like on a deeper level, you would have felt like shit if you watch Netflix instead of studying for that final. And if you didn't feel like shit that night, you would have learned it the next morning. <laughs> and like so there's definitely depth to this idea but um yeah but it really is it really is like coming back to to like a simplicity of following enjoyment and and viewing life as a beautiful playground really yeah dude I, i'm glad you brought that up because some of the i think it's all about being aligned um I, one of my heroes one of the guys i look up to is zan perion like i love his flaws mm. he kind of preaches this kind of same thing but in like a different, different like flowery, poetic way. Yeah. Right. And in his book, the uh, the Alabaster Girl, which is, uh, I got it here. Nice. Yeah, I just and I have it signed. <laughs> oh, oh my god! No, okay. It's like so, we got some product placement going on in this interview. Yeah, I, need to, I need to get some commission on. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I lost where I was going. No, but his his philosophy. Uh, yeah, you said it was like a little bit of a similar perspective on life. It right? is a very similar perspective. And, and he asked in, in this book, he asked like, am I happy? It's like, no, I feel aligned. Mm. And he uses the word I follow. Uh, he follows his bliss. That's the word he uses. And he, mm. he goes on to define it. He's like, look, it's not about like what you were saying. It's just like going to every single hedonistic you know, whim, right? It's not, that's not follow your bliss means, right? And he kind of defines it. And I, but I think I like this word alignment, you know, because yeah, like you're going to do things that are a little uncomfortable, mm -hmm. but like, right, like right now, if I felt into my body, like I feel resistance, right? I feel a little nervous being on, you know, live talking about this, you know, yeah. for whatever reason. Yeah, I, I do. I feel, I feel resistance, anxiety. It's, it's a little uncomfortable. And, but but then there's this greater, like deeper voice, like you were saying, like, but I feel aligned doing this. I feel excited at the same time. And, and the, uh, the alignment, I guess the enjoyment overweighs outweighs that little resistance that. Mm. Anxiety. So yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a beautiful journey for sure. And, um, and yeah, I'll just say to the person who's like, Oh, like, so, you know, just the hedonistic lifestyle is that what he's saying? Like, you know, I would actually say, don't listen to what we're saying. Try it for yourself. You know, just if you explore that hedonistic lifestyle, you chances are you're not going to find the fulfillment and the pleasure <laughs> and the enjoyment you're looking for. Um, just make sure if you, whatever you explore, you know, and this is to anyone, like as you're exploring life, just constantly be feeling in and constantly checking in. It's like to how everything oh. is making you feel and, and try to feel it on like a deeper and deeper level um and that'll that'll give you everything you need to learn and all of your quote unquote failures in life everything that causes you pain well from that perspective from like really checking in and feeling the entire way like they will only guide you even stronger they will only make your compass more and more sensitive and stronger and easier to follow and it's like yeah from this path there is there are no like mistakes everything is just more data to compute right everything is more uh points on the map so yeah you can't go wrong exactly there are no mistakes there are no failures it's just just these data points we can forgive yeah. ourselves totally yeah on this path man i love it exactly dude <laughs> jamin this was so freaking good yeah man this uh, was fun thanks for having me on dude Thank you. And um, we'll have to do this again sometime, man. Yeah. Just, I'd uh, love you to. know, in enjoyment, of course, you know, riding the wave of life, we'll, we'll, of course, we'll figure it out, you know? Of course. Yeah. Just because we, it feels good to do so. <laughs> exactly, man. Exactly. Awesome. 
Well, guys, um, check out Jamin Yi. I have his uh, website uh, in the description. Check out his latest post, Talk Real Shit, which is what we're doing right now with Talk Real Shit. <laughs> <laughs> we are. Real, we're living it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, but for real, like, um, dude, read Jamin's blog. It's, it's awesome. And I know he's going to be impacting way more people than he is right now. So um, check out his blog. And I appreciate you watching. Remember to set people free everywhere you go and begin, begin with you. Begin by listening to that compass, heading on this path of enjoyment, freedom, ease, and delight. So thank you and uh, good night. Peace. Peace.